side then? Yep. And so you can just see where you Oh, okay. All right, it's 10 o'clock, so I'm going to get started. Um, first thing that I'm going to go over is things you should have uh, for measuring houses. Um, WD40 is not good for measuring, but you have it in your car. It's just telling the story about when to go into a house for a final walk to before closing, and the key would not go against the door lock because it was, it was ice in it. So, square little list inside, and that was everything. We got it. We closed. All right. Okay, so, you want to get yourself a 100 footer. I got a 252 um, for I used to do surveying someone and that's good for that. So, get yourself a nice one, fiberglass, not metal. I had a metal one. It rusted. It cut me many times. Um, so, get yourself a nice fiberglass one. They don't rust in the snow, all of that good stuff. Good two uses of this. For measuring a house, you need to stake this thing so you can walk the distance of the house. You can stick the screwdriver in the ground and hold it down. You can't put the house. The other good thing is when you're trying to put your directional arrows or, or something in the ground, it makes a good hole for that too. Take one of those if you got a dog. Um, <laughs> the other thing that I like to have is a nice get yourself a wide one they the wider they are the longer they stay rigid get one of those little thin half inch ones it would have it would have done that at about the eight. so get yourself a really nice um uh, uh, tape measure like that wide one um right just for wiping your stuff off when you're done so those are the tools that you really need to have I'm going to run to my office because I can grab one other thing that I thought that I really love. Got to grab this. Get yourself one of these. Two, two, two things. You can measure a room super fast with it, and it cuts down your conversations as, a, as the seller is sitting there with you and talking about your house. You can you can go through a lot faster. Thing I, ones that I like, like this one here, I can do this, and then I can go to the other side of the room, do this, both readings right there. So I don't have to write down one and measure another one. Um, that's what I like about this this one here that I got. A little bit more expensive, it's like 50 bucks for it. But get yourself one of those. Saves yourselves a lot of time. Um, also makes a great cat toy. Sure, I got a cat. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the other thing is, if you can go measure a house when the seller is not there, it's a lot more relaxing. Okay, so if you can get to a point where you sign the paperwork one night and go back the next day and measure, you take your time to do it, bring your boots along and everything like that this time of year, try to do that, but it doesn't always work. So sometimes you're there with the seller and the seller wants to see everything that you're doing. And so, uh, that, so that, that's, that's my little point. If you can go back, um, clipboard, um, shoot, I should have brought that in too. I got a clipboard. And I have a little plastic shield that goes up, like it's just a it's just a um, paper protector. So when it's snowing, raining, that's over. I just flip it up, write my notes, flips back down. So if it's sprinkling out or there's any water, it doesn't run the ink on my on my um, on my pad of paper that I'm jotting down. So I take a lot of notes and I draw a lot of pictures in my notes of when I'm measuring stuff. So. Um, I'll just kind of show you what I do on that. Um, so just looking at my outline here, I think I've hit all of the good stuff as far as your recommended tools. Tricky areas are additions, cantilevers, overhangs. You guys all know what I'm kind of talking about with those things is, is what do you do when, you, when you're looking at a house um, and you need to um, figure out what is space that you should be measuring? What space you shouldn't be measuring? 
Um, real tough ones are when you got the second floor and you can't get to it anyway, but you got to kind of guess. And you, 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 I do, but that's where you draw your pictures. If you ever ended up in court, you can say, this is what I did, judge. And you can back it up. Um, never use anybody else's measurements on the house. Do not, do not, do not, because now you have to prove where you got that from. Oh, I just copied it out of the old MLS. That will not go very far in court, okay? Um, using an old appraisal probably has some more validity than using old MLS data. I have received an old appraisal from a seller in the past and looked at it as a reference. I kind of look at my notes, look at their notes and figure out what I'm, where am I maybe missing something or if I'm dead on to what the appraiser is saying. <coughs> so that's sometimes what you can use as an old appraisal. Um, so when you're getting into some of these tricky areas like cantilevers, and people understand what I mean by cantilever, um, I, I could pull up some listings, but let's say you, the main floor of the house is a square, but the master bedroom hangs out an extra 18 inches in the back. That's the way it was built. That's a cantilever. So that's going to be bigger than your foundation size of your house. Um, bay windows. Bay windows are usually not within the foundation size of the, of the house, but they need to be counted in the square footage. They cantilever out. And there's a quick little formula that I, that I have there for bay windows. Do you want to do it? The, the width, um, half, of the, um, half of the base is going out um, and uh, times height or use your square footage. Um, so kind of what that means is, and here's a simple way to think about it is if you have your house like this, here's your bay window. These are usually 45 degree angles. If they're not, it doesn't matter. Um, you're, for figuring this space out, it's half times of the base. This is the base times the height. That's how you figure it's one half of that. If you got two of them, it's quite easy. Draw a picture, you got two of them. If it's two feet by two feet, I got four there. I cut that off and I say, this is two feet by six. At 12 there. Got any sense on how to figure out a bay window? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> what's the width? Can you just, what's on this? For here's, the, here's the formula for picking out a triangle is one and a half of the base times height or length in our situation. So here's your base, always, and this is your height of your triangle. You know those two numbers, two by two. That's four, half of that, this will be two square feet, right? That area. So, yeah, like you said, chances are they're gonna be the same on each side. So it's yeah, and it doesn't matter if they're 45s or there's 30s, it all works out the same if you use the half. You don't do the whole length though. You do, well then you have to just try to separate. I break everything oh, into yeah. squares. Yeah. I break everything into squares. So if I got a house that um, is, Got one square like this, and then there's been an addition put on, and maybe the basement is a little bit different shape. Break it down to squares. The addition is 12 by 10. That's and I go with 120. This area is going to be 24 times, I'm going to give myself an easy number 20. I write it down. Then this one, same thing. 12 by 20. I got my, I got my or my three areas figured out. So break it down into squares, easy things to calculate. So that's the easiest way to do it. Um, and that's, sorry, I got simple brain. I break no, things I down to the that. simple. No, that's so that. that's good. Bathrooms? Bathrooms? Yeah. As far as how well, to, do you do Because the they often have like the bathtub is that, that it's kind of that outcropping. So you just, Use that as a, a rectangle or a yes, right. whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, you count the bathtub. The bathtub's finished. The, the walls around the bathtub are finished. So right. it's a square. It's typically a square. Okay. It's still floor space. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. Same with kitchens with cupboards. Go to the back. Go to the back. Go to the outside wall. Back of the, yeah, appliances. The yep. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. yeah, wood stairs. I'm really yeah. confused with stairs. Yeah. Stairs. That's a good one. Because. <laughs> do, you, do, do you count them? 
That's what I've always wondered. What do you mean? I've not been. I've not been. Just make sure your LLC and you're fine. Yeah. Well, you still get sued. God. You still have to get sued, but um, just do a diligent work on it. I've never, you know, the likelihood of us getting sued. I mean, I don't know how many people in this office we don't. I don't track the suits, but it, I've been doing this for 35 years now, I think it is. I've not been sued in yes. 35 years doing, you know, 30 transactions a year on average. So, um, yeah, so you, you, if you do it right and apologize a lot, you don't get sued. So, <laughs> Stairs. so if you got your house. Has finished square feet. Okay, you got your split entry house. You know, the staircase in the middle that, yep. um, that, so this, I would count them in the main level. So if this is a 24 by 36 house, pretty typical, that I'm including the stairs. Okay. Now, when you go to the basement, people do it different. So the basement's going to have a family room over here, a oh, family room. They're gonna have a bath back here. They got the utility room over here that's not finished, and you might have a bedroom over here. I take the stairs out on something like that. I, I it, it actually, I, uh, to be truthful, I want both ways okay. because it, it sometimes it's very difficult to take that square footage out because you kind of included it in the main line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you have a house um, with a big vaulted two-story Foyer. Do you count the square footage of the foyer in your upper level? Because let's say you got the house, here's the nice big entryway, the staircase that goes up all around it. Now the second floor, this open right here. So if you got your 24 by 36, that's great for your main level, but for your upper level, if it's identical, you're going to have to take this 10 by 10 area out. Or whatever it is when you calculate the square footage for the upper floor, because there's not there's no floor there. Okay, so you have to minus that space out of there. Would you just cut it to squares? You could do that too. Yeah. Measure the upstairs. I just would take I would take the twenty four by thirty six. Okay. And that equals, and then I'd say this is ten by ten. So you would subtract that out and say so 100 square feet. This is going to be, I'm just going to say 960, pick it over. Um, so then I got 860 upstairs for my square feet footage. Or you can divide it up into squares if you want to. Um, I think it's easier to go the outside, just subtract the inside from it instead of trying to. That's foundation measurements. Okay. Um, length times width. Length times width. Sorry, I don't mean to jump around. That That's okay. I'll we'll make sure to cover everything on there. That's I length times width, and that's why get yourself a nice pair of boots that come up to your yeah. knees because you're going to be walking through snow drifts this time of year to measure to accurately measure a house. And so that's um, uh, I just do walk I walk the outside and no I garage. measure every length, wall. Length on it. with no garage. Yeah, there's a great video. I was going to get to that part too. Um, there, here is your front page of of the. Um, of yours when you sign in. It's not like me. There we go. So when you sign in to, make, uh, to North Star, down here, how to videos. Um, and then you can search. Where's my search? Um, and there are three very good videos here. This woman's an attorney. I mean, not an attorney. She's a appraiser and a realtor. And so she has some great videos on measuring a house. This 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 one is like an hour long. Um, I was actually going to have us watch this one. I'll just go to it right now because this is measuring a split multi-level. This is one of the the tougher things on YouTube helps me reach engaged customers like Jenna, who's been searching for landscapers on Google. So when she watches YouTube, my ads there with a link to schedule now. I can find customers on YouTube. Get started with YouTube advertising and find yours too. Hi, 
I'm Zoe, and today we are going to talk about measuring a four-level split. A typical four-level split here in Robbinsdale, uh, mid-century home, pretty basic style that a lot of you have seen before, um, but a lot of people think a four-level is hard to measure, to get confused about what's above grade and what's below grade. Uh, you'll see as we go around, though, that uh, there are two levels above grade, two levels below grade, and essentially just think of it as a rambler, but just kind of a little bit off the floor. So we'll go around the whole house, measure the whole thing, and I'll talk to you a little bit about how to make sure that you've got everything that you have this city. So this house we need to take into consideration, um, and also a garage and things like that. So I'm going to start at one corner and start pulling my tape measure across and go all the way around and draw my sketch up. Dang it. You can also use the pen. Why measuring that? Oh, and I went to the other video. Sorry about that. Oh, that's my fault. First of all, you got me doing stuff I don't. We're outside the 19th. A little bit about how to make sure that you've got everything that you haven't missed anything. There's a porch on this house we need to take into consideration, um, and also a garage and things like that. So I'm going to start at one corner and start pulling my tape measure across and go all the way around and draw my sketch on my graph paper as I go. All right, I'm going to start at the corner. I've got my fiberglass tape measure with a hook on the end. I just hook it on the edge of the house. As long as I apply a little pressure to it as I walk, I can step around the bushes and come out from a little bit. So that's why my tape never stays on. that you gotta you just have to know the house if you have a porch you need to gotta stop at a certain spot like here okay, now that was 22 feet four inches but the four inches is pretty much because i had to go out and around the gutter so i'm just going to go with 22 feet on that then i come up here i can see i've got a little bit of a porch here and that's different that's not part of the house it's a separate thing I got a lot of plants again, so I'm going to use the tape measure and go ahead and do this distance right from here. And that's 10 feet. Okay. Just make sure you take everything into consideration separately. You mark what's the garage and what's the porch and what's actually in front of the house. 
right, we're in the back of the house now. This is the back corner of the porch. So I'm going to take my tape measure all the way across. What I need you noting as I go where the porch ends, and I can see through the door here, that's where the porch ends. And I'll be noting where the doorways are, and then I'll get over to that other wall over there where the bump out is. And that bump out back there helps me match up with the front. And the front where I could look at the upper level and kind of back up and figure out where the square footage was there. This bump that will line up with that and will help me make sure that I got that measure on the front correct. Up on the side. And I'm going to note right here, this is the end of the porch, so that's about 11 and a half feet. And we'll keep on going. Okay, so 36 feet all the way across and a two foot bump out again. So I'll make another end of my stitch. So I made a note as I went across that it was 36 feet the whole distance, and I marked off in black that the porch was actually one and a half feet right there. And then here's my other two feet going up. Yeah, to put the doors on. Here's the last section right here. I'm actually going to start on the other end because this gutter makes it hard to hook a tape measure on. When the gutter's that close to the edge, it's really hard to hook the tape measure on. So I'll start at that end. Uh, this is That's where I use the screwdriver sometimes to stick it in the ground and then it was hard for me to see what was upstairs a little bit because the uh, most the houses are in two feet so increments. Exactly most houses, but I can't say all of them. So that's why sure like when she was twenty two feet six inches. I probably would have wrote down twenty two inches of mine. Some of that's the brick, some of that's the siding that makes it a little bit bigger. And do it in sections. You can always do it in sections if you can't get up against the house you've laid out. So by just using this tape measure and doing it in sections, I came up with 20 feet. On the front, I had 20 and a half feet. So they're definitely within range of each other. So I'm not going to worry too much about that half foot. I'll figure it out when I do the rest of the sketch. But this did help me double check the front. Now also, I would go into the uh, last side of this house. This house has got uh, more bushes on that side and a fence over there, so it's going to be difficult, but I can hook the uh, tape measure on the fence, like I showed in the last video, and sit on the side of the house and measure it up there. So remember to do all four sides, and it helps you catch all your measurements. Before I go into the house, I will write down these measurements, and I will add up the front and the back, make sure they match, and add up the sides and make sure they match, make sure I didn't miss any measurements. Split now. The front door is right across from me. Just wanted to point out I talked about a four level split being uh, really just a rambler that hit an earthquake. So I'm sitting on the main floor right now. Front door right here. I've got the living room right here, kitchen right behind me, and the stairs are right here. If you look up the stairs, that's that half flight of stairs that goes up to the upper level. There's three bedrooms and a bathroom up there, and downstairs to another level, and then below where I'm standing is the fourth level. If you just forget about these stairs and kind of move the house, where this level of the bedrooms becomes part of the main level, and that bedroom down there becomes part of the lower level. Just think about getting rid of the stairs and anything about. So this plus there is all one level. And when I draw the sketch, it'll look like a rampart. And that level plus the level below the living room here will all be on one level also, and that would be all the basement. A lot of people try to call that above grade if there's a walkout. But the, you would never call a rambler a walkout. Um, you never call the basement on a rambler above grade finished square footage just because it has a walkout. This you have to go down half a flight of stairs to get to, so that it is part of the basement. We're standing in the porch now. Remember when I went on the outside of the house, you can see the porch from the outside. Came through the uh, dining room right here out to the porch. I always double check the step out to the room, make sure there are no bump outs from the house, nothing that I missed from the outside. And also, this is a group from the garage. I always want to take a key in the garage, make sure there's no bump outs out there, that the garage didn't cut in and add more closet space in the living room or something like that. So just make sure that you come out, double check things, open the way. What she has just touched on is very common to come across is sometimes a closet goes into a garage. And so you need to get that square footage in your uh, measurements. Um, it, you don't see it too often. Um, it, I know there's a lot of this one style of split enter multi-level built here in Woodbury that it does jettison into the garage quite a, quite a ways. The laundry room goes into the garage quite a ways. So make sure, like she said, stick your head in the, garage, in the garage and make sure you don't have any cantilevers or anything coming into the garage that's taking up garage space that should be counted as finished square feet inside the house. It's looking every place, so that I know that this line runs straight back, the house is a straight line back here. This wall of the porch matches up with that wall of the garage. Everything else is straight line. Everything else is straight line. We're in the lowest level of the house now, we're in the basement. 
And when you are measuring to get your below ground finished square footage, you need to figure out what's finished in the basement and what's not. You already know the overall size of the basement. We got that from the outside, you know, this level plus the level that's half a flight of stairs up. You've got those measurements in the outside. The easiest way to figure out what's finished in the basement is to take that overall measurement and subtract the utility room out of it. Generally, there's one room that's unfinished. It's much easier to subtract that one room out than to add in the family room plus the bedroom plus the bathroom plus the closet plus the hallway. Okay, so just take it a little bit easier. Got the outside measurement, subtract the unfinished area, and makes it easier to get. Again, that what she's saying is a better way to do it because if you took a 10 by 10 room and a 12 by 12 room and added those numbers up for your square footage for your house you're actually going to be jipping out your cellar of a few square footage because you're not getting that six inch wall in between each room counting in as finished square footage. So like she said, don't, when you're looking for square footage, don't add the individual rooms up, try to subtract from the overall and you'll, you'll, you'll get a better number for your cellar. Below ground finished square footage, which then you can add to the above ground and get your total finished square footage. Okay. Any other So there's two other videos that you can watch. Um, oops, sorry. Um, um, where were they? One of my tabs up here. Um, one of them talks about um, the um, why we need to do this so much. This one right here um, that's 52 minutes long, it's a good one to watch. And really what we're trying to do is protect the integrity of the MLS information. That's why it's so important to get these numbers right is because now when you go to price a house, you're gonna be using another agent's data from what the house they sold, you know, you're pulling up your comps. If those comps aren't accurate, then we're, not, we're doing a disservice to anybody else that's using it, trying to make a do an evaluation for another property. The, we're hurting the appraisers because the information isn't 100% accurate. So be careful with that. Um, just watch that video. It's a good one. I don't didn't want to take up the whole class and, and do that because I want to interact and have questions raised by you guys. So that's that's a good video to watch. Um, I will say we just had one listing that came up and they see us used the old persons, used what was in the public database. It was about 600 square feet off. I told him, I told him, he said, no, it's not, I measured it. Oh, you didn't measure it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the appraiser came back and said, yeah, no, you're wrong. So they had to lower the price because the footage was wrong and that messed up all the regulations of entry. Yeah, I had the same thing. I had a, a low appraisal on my listing. I knew my listing was identical to this other one that had sold because I had gone through that house and shown it. And when I priced mine out and sold it, the appraiser came back and wouldn't give me value because the people, the other one that was using as a comp had sold and closed, but the MLS information was way wrong on it. He did not have the right square footage in there. Even if you looked at the county records, the agent did not have that other house listed. And so it messed up my appraisal on my listing. So it does happen. So be accurate. That's the real reason that we're doing this is so you are helping out your other agents out. You're going to be helping yourself out in the long run too on, on appraisals and market and value. So that's why they do it. So can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. I'm going to just, uh, especially just based on what she had just talked about, can you measure the total square footage of the outside? And then she's saying, okay, now take that and just subtract the laundry room because that's not finished. Yep. So basically the square footage of that whole level is the outside walls, the inside walls, the everything. So measuring the interior of the house doesn't give you any consideration. You'll be short. You'll right. be short on your so square you footage. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you add it up that way. Sometimes what I've done, if I can't get a measurement from the outside, I will stand in the inside of the house and say, how can I see wall to wall, exterior wall to exterior wall? And I measure that to get my outside dimensions. And I'll add an extra, I'll add an extra foot to tell you the truth because walls right. are six inches wide on the outside. The laser level, if you can't a laser to measure inside, you really need to have that big mm -hmm. time because you're not completely on the wall. Correct. You're hundred percent correct on that. So it's a little bit of space. You can't live inside the wall, but it's going to cool. Yeah, 
and that's common practice. You're not doing anything wrong. You're not doing anything illegal. You, that's co very common practice. And if you ever, if you ever take, um, if, if seller ever gives you blueprints to, to use as your measurements, great thing to have if they're accurate. Um, and you can use outside dimensions on that. Those things are, those things are dimensioned to the outsides. If you ever need help reading a blueprint, bring it to me. Chris does all the time, right, Dakota? Oh. <laughs> she, she brings me her blueprints and says, how do I measure this house? And so you divide it up into squares and stuff like that. So I'll try. Yeah. Um, finished versus unfinished. According, I'll get back to my, my outline here. It has to be permanent space. It has to be heated and air conditioned. But if the house doesn't have air conditioned, that doesn't matter. But it has to have a heat source. It's got to be a conditioned space is what they call it. So it can't be a three season porch that doesn't have any heat to duck or anything out there. It's a space heater counts as a as conditioning the space, but it needs to be um, it, it, it does need to be able to be heated and livable all year round. So I want to kind of throw this up four level of split. The, the lower, lower, lower level mm -hmm. is carpeted. Windows heated, it's totally livable. The ceiling is the walls are sheetrock. Everything's done there. except the ceiling, and it's livable. Can't count it. I didn't. Now you could just, what yeah. you should do in that situation is in the agent remarks, put family room is an additional 400 square feet finished yeah. downstairs, only needs a ceiling. Yeah. Something like that. Let people know that the square footage is there. Um, otherwise, your showings aren't gonna happen. Yeah. So in that type of situation, do that. I had one where, um, and it kind of goes into my outline a little bit later, is what do you do with loft? You know, th these new places that are just painting the ceilings, you know, and they're painting the ductwork, they're painting industrial, yeah. industrial type look. The way the appraisers look at it, the MLS looks at it, if it's the style of the house, so if you've got these lofts that were built with that industrial look, it's finished. If it's a single family home, because I've done this, I've gone down in a basement and somebody painted everything in the in the black up above, finished the walls, just like what you, yours was, but they painted everything up in the ceiling black, the wiring, the plumbing, the and made it industrial look. Technically not finished. Okay, so. Which you just wanted to put in the drop ceiling. I didn't have time on my package to those yeah. things, so it was time sensitive, but would you, wouldn't it make sense to just put it in the drop ceiling? Uh, maybe uh, depending, depending on the qualifications of the homeowner, <laughs> you know, if they could, if yeah. they're if they're able to do it. Um, otherwise, you just might want to let somebody else um, finish the ceiling the way they want. Because some people will like drop ceilings so they can get access to plumbing and access to things. Some people like the finished look of a sheetrock ceiling. So I, I would have probably just left it, left them to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. So finished walls, finished ceiling, um, finished floors. Painted floor, you're marginal on a painted floor if that's finished or not. Painted black walls in the basement doesn't count as finished walls, okay? They have to have some type of wall covering on them. Um, do, do, do. I talked about open foyers and two-story great rooms that you can't double that square footage. So if you ever have a house with a big family room with two stories and you're just calculating the outsides for your second level, you gotta subtract that, that open area out of your square footage for the upper level. Uh, bedroom requirements, 70 square feet um, is, the, is what is required to call something a bedroom. And some of the things that you get into with, in, if you get into homes, the older one and a half story style homes, they got your one and a half story, got your finished, and there's a finished room up here. 70 square feet, but it has to be five feet finished space. So if they finished out to here, let's say, and this wall is only four feet, you have to go back to where the ceiling is five feet, and that's where you can start measuring your floor. Measure across to where it's five feet on this side. And that's all you can count. Even if this space is finished here with walls, carpet, and everything like that, the five foot 
No. Okay. Remember that. Um, and then the it has to be, and it can't be like four feet by twenty feet to get to eighty. There, I believe it's an eight foot minimum for the width of a room, uh, or seven foot. Seven foot. In my notes here. So if a room is less than seven feet wide, can't count as a bedroom. That was when you ran into it. Was no, there still water plate? Here's the walk. Here's the walk. Yeah, but I because I did do the five feet. Yeah. Research did enough to know the five feet gives us the walk. And that's another thing. I don't have that in my notes, or do I? You cannot pass from one room to get to another room and call this room a bedroom. So if you have to go through a room to get to another room, never going to be a bedroom. Okay. It's a hallway. Non-conforming second. Yeah. Can you call the bonus room? Bonus room, den, yeah. um, hobby room, second. whatever you want to call it, but it cannot be a bedroom if you pass through it to get to another room. Colorado would have made the rules. You actually call it a bedroom. Yeah. I mean, if you're passing through to a, to a bathroom or a parking closet, that's that's like a really, really nice master suite or owner suite. Um, so you can count it there, but if you're passing from one room to another, you can't count that. Um, this came up because, you know, I had a seller arguing that the place was the room was a bedroom and it did not closet, you know, so I checked in with the MLS people and they said they're just putting your remarks, you know, not wanting a bedroom. It did not but it's like, okay. There's a lot of misunderstanding that it has to be a bedroom if it has a closet. And that, that's, a, that's something that, this, that- This was in the city of St. Paul. It, I've, I've heard it both ways. City of St. Paul requires it to have a closet. So you have they to- They did not when I called oh, them, the, the, the city did not, okay. Yeah. Then you can follow their guidelines. Because that's the ML, That's how the MLS looks at it. The basement, that was a concern, but yeah. it was in the basement. Yeah, so if, if it- what I understand is it does not have to have a closet because you could put an armoire in the room, leave it for the next owner. It's better now. Just some clarification. Yeah, we might want to chime in. We were in Scott Miller's uh, class a couple weeks ago, and he was adamant that national code trumped city code. I've been following the city. Um, I thought it was whichever was strictest. Okay. <laughs> That's what we need clarification on. But you said yeah, go to the MLS. Well, the MLS is going to say go to the city, right? Yeah. They, so they do or they default to the city. De you know, default to the city. Code. He was adamant. He, was, he gave us all the code, national code for all of it. Keep it in a briefcase. We can take yeah. it on anybody. It, 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 my opinion is the MLS is the ones who control us to have access to yeah. the MLS, and they're the ones that can give us a big old fine. Yeah. MLS trumps everything. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And that's why I just wanted to talk about So, Rob, what are you saying on record? Um, MLS. MLS. That's what I if, I, if I have a question on anything, I contact the MLS and tell me how to address this. I write down my notes for who I talk to and what time I talk to them and what they told me, and I keep that in the file. So cover your butt, hundred dollar fines. Doesn't sound like a lot, but they start to add up after a while. So, yeah. All right. Um, I think. Oh, egress window for bedroom needs an egress window. Also, now you might go to the east side of St. Paul or some of these houses that were built in the fifties that have um, here's your bedroom wall, and you got these windows up here that are five feet off the ground. It. That is a bedroom because at the time the house was built, it was code, and you go back to when the code of the house was built. Okay, so you can, when they got those little windows up above, it is still a bedroom because it was at the time the house was built. So it's nothing to do with being able to escape or anything. No, not on the older ones. ones. Okay. Technically, an egress window needs to be no more than so. If you had a, a window in a basement, we're going to try to determine if it's egress or not. Picture yourself as a fireman, air tank, everything on the back. Can you get through that window? It's supposed to have five square feet of, of operable glass. 
up with the glass because you got to open it up, measure it, look at it. I kind of eye it up. I kind of fire and get through this so I have five foot. And the other thing is the height off the floor, 42 inches max. Eight four, 44. 44? 44. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it varies. The building code on that has changed around a little bit over time. It used to be 36. And you cannot, they used to do this. Oh, I'll just put a permanent step here in the bedroom. Now my distance is 40, 50 inches. I pass, right? No, doesn't count anymore. There would be people used to try to get away with that. It's kind of step. Fireman coming in from the outside. He doesn't know that step's there. It's a danger for him. Does so, the window well have to actually be five feet wide? Type in or window well has to have a ladder. And I'm trying to remember the score footage requirements, but it does have to have a ladder for it to be able to get out. So make sure your window wells have a ladder. It's all degress. Um, I kind of covered why we care um, about this information. And then um, above and below ground score footage. You like the like Zoe said in hers. Um, if you got to go down a set of steps to get to that level, it's below ground. Okay. Now modified two stories are going to be a little bit different because it's just two steps from the kitchen down to the family room. Most of the time, that room is on grade or has a basement below it, so you can count that. That the modified two story is the one exception to that. Is that if you go down two, three steps to get to that level, you can still count it. If you go down more than two steps or three steps, it is a basement. If you go down a half a flight, it's a basement. Okay. I just looked at one, it was like an earth home. So we went to home stairs and all the main living was there. So is that technically the main level or is that the lower <laughs> level? That, if it's the, that would be a main level. That would be a little fun one. And the homes are fun to try to sell. <laughs> I've had a few overweight. You know what the hard part is? Get your financing lined up. That's the hard part on those earth homes and the firm homes, dome homes. Just side note, um, the financing is the difficult part on selling one of those homes. Banks don't want to finance it. So just FYI on that. Um, so like when Zoe was doing that picture of the, the, doing the four level, where you have your upper level, you got your level where the kitchen, dining areas, and then you go down to the family room, and maybe there's even a basement underneath this part right here. That's with the staircase going you know, in between like this. These are the two upper levels. That's above grade. These are below grade. Makes sense. So if it's a garden level. It's below grade, yeah. Anytime there's dirt above your floor of your what you're walking on, it's it's a basement. Even if it's one wall. Even if it's just one wall. Yep. The other three walls could be walkout, but if one wall has dirt against it, it's a basement. Um, let's see here. Um, what happens when you walk into the house? Technically, the basement, but that's where all the living space is. That's the main walk-in. So mm -hmm. You have to walk up the stairs. If it's if it, any portion of any wall is below grade, below the dirt level, outside of the Even home, the is, is considered the main level. Yeah, because there's a lot of those houses where there's a tucker under garage. Yeah. And you walk in on that level, but you have to go up to the living level. There's going to be one wall on that house that probably is underground. If everything is built above ground, on a slab. And there's nothing below the ground, you could count all of it as above ground square footage. Yep. Um, what about bathrooms? Like these people that have the toilet in the basement with the shower curtain heated, and then they call it a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got it. We got it. There was a term for we used to have the east side, got the yep. east side bathroom. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it would usually sit over the floor drain. Well, yeah, the shot the shower, the shower used the floor drain of the basement as the as the drain for the shower. Yeah. <laughs> Funniest one. I, I there was actually one of these that had one like that. And the toilet was inside the shower stall. 
I'm like, that's efficient. You know? <laughs> so we run, we run across a lot of funny stuff in our in our industry, but that was one I note, noted as, as hysterical. Um, I think we modified two stories. Anybody have any questions about measuring a modified two story? Because there's a lot of square footage on that's typically above grade on those. Um, the, the, there's some of the ones that are difficult to figure out square footage is when you have a, even on the newer houses where you have a slanted roof line and the upstairs comes into the attic area a little bit, uses some of this roof line to, to um, for the bedroom space or for a closet space or something like that, bonus rooms over garages. Those are fun to try to figure out because you got you have to try to gauge on the when you're standing outside the home. Where does that wall start? Where does the second? Where does the interior wall of that second floor start? Based on your outside, and and some of the um, watch one of her videos because this one video right here about measuring a one and a half story is quite interesting because some some of the one and a half stories are very tricky as to where the where the walls start, where the walls stop on the second story. And so when you measure the out, I always measure the outside first, then go back inside. And as you're measuring the inside rooms, verify what you took, what your drawing looks like on the, from the outside. Because sometimes you get into the house and go, oh, that wasn't square footage or, oh, I missed something on the outside. So just double check as you're going through and looking at your drawing from the outside that it kind of matches up with your drawing from the inside. That's a good question because I have a listing coming up where it is like a story and house bungalow. So, you know, there's a bedroom at one end, the upstairs, the bedroom at the other end, the hallway in the middle. But then there's these two little areas under the roof line that could be a play area or, you know, room enough for a guest or sitting. Five feet. Five feet. <laughs> Five foot, five feet, yeah. five feet. If you, you can't count it as finished square footage unless it has five foot. Okay. There, anything under five foot is just space. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you, that's that's the rules. You know, and if you ever have a seller that argues with you about something, go back to the MLS. Blame it on the MLS. You know, th this is what my MLS requirements are. This is what I have to do to properly put your house in there. I don't want to pay the fine for having mis and misrepresented the information. I don't want to get sued over misrepresenting the information, Mr. Seller or Mrs. Seller. So this is this is the standards I have to practice within. And you can, you can always get the rules from the MLS and send it to a seller if they're really arguing with you. I typically don't have them argue. Um, so that's, um, that's how I work it. Um, a few communities, Woodbury here on their houses that are about 1990 and newer. You can call the city and they have the floor plan. They have the blueprints shrunk down and they can email them to you. Great to ask for that, to, ver to double verify your information. They have a survey, they'll send you the survey too. So not all cities will do that because I've had some cities go, no, that is protected private information. We cannot give that information out. It's operated floor plan. We're not giving it out. Could you explain that again? I just did So it's only the city of Woodbury that you could request a blueprint of the house? Yes. What I'm working with in Woodbury, I get a listing here. I call the city and ask them if they have the blueprint and the survey on file. And they will email it to me. Lionel Lakes told me that is private information. I cannot give that out. Um, Cottage Grove told me it's private information, can't give it out. So I've only really found Woodbury does it and some other communities, I always ask. Could you get the sellers? Um, yeah, and probably. That's, that, that's a good idea, Rob. I never thought about that. But really, step that they have to do yeah, it's a, some plans are copyrighted. Some floor plans and blueprints are copyrighted by the builder. And you cannot do anything with it. And that's that's what the city's trying to protect is the copyright of the builder's plans. Um, let's see here. Um, what about lot lot sizes and like um, I guess that's 
That's good. Yeah, lot size, I mean, that's part of measuring. Um, I usually pull up the realist report and in, within that realist report, there is a drawing of the, um, of the lot typically. And if it has five sides in the MLS system, put all five sides in there, you know, um, has more than that, just put all the dimensions in there. Um, remember that we have to measure garages now. I came from, we never care about garages. Now the MLS wants garage dimensions, door height, all of that stuff so that people can, who are looking for eight foot garage doors or someplace they can get their big long boat in, they, they can do that. So I commonly forget that, unfortunately, because I'm not trained that way. I'm retraining myself to get those garage dimensions. So, um, yeah, and I think I, yep, there's a 44 inches max for the egress window, 5.7 square feet. Uh, minimum 20 inches wide, 24 inches tall is the minimum for an egress window. So basically, you think about 20 inches by 24, some firemen can crawl through that and can get in to save your butt. Um, yeah, dress for measuring. Uh, go back another day if you can. It's so much more relaxing to measure a house when the homeowner isn't there. And you can take more detailed notes about all the all the things you wanna promote. You wanna promote the wood floors, you wanna promote this. It's just easier when somebody's not over your shoulder watching you doing this work. So go back if you can, um, just make that part of your system. Hey, Mr. Seller, what I do is I come out and present my mark analysis and do the paperwork with you one day. I come back a day or two later and do the measurements and then in the photos, and then we get on the market. You know, sometimes when I've met my photographer there, not in COVID days, but what I would meet my photographer to let him in to take the pictures and I'd make my room measurements while the photographer's doing their work. They're upstairs, I'm downstairs. I gotta be there anyways. That's a good time to do it. So, um, yeah. What about like, photographers now? They can do the room dimensions and of course they put their little like, you know, this is just, you know, based on, you know, it's not really accurate. Mm -hmm. um, has there been any people, appraisers, buyers that are questioning what it says the photographer has taken versus the actual measurements? I have never had that happen to me. Um, I know that's a new thing that if you're listing a house, the, it's part of a package you can get from your photographer. I've never really employed it too much. Um, I, I don't know. I've never, I've never had buyers really say, ooh, I, gotta, I want that. But I see it happening more and more on more listings is that there's a little layout of the house so people know what it looks like. If that becomes more of the norm, I will use it. I will start to use that in my system, but for right now I don't. And I haven't had any issues with it. Other questions? Any questions on anything else besides measuring? We've got three minutes left. Yeah, me for three minutes. This. And I'm here in the office a lot. I sit right on the other side of this wall right here. So if you ever have questions about measuring, come ask me. I'm happy. Questions about anything. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, 35 years of experience. I read a lot. I, I tend to think of myself as a knowledge-based person. I like to learn and read stuff so I stay on top of things. And so I might have an answer for you or how to keep your butt out of trouble how to address such situations. Yeah. So I'm kind of going back to what she said in, in conjunction with what I asked before about how it's and sets. The photographer is going to do his dimensions. Their dimensions, they're going to be what the inside space is, right? Correct. So when you do yours from your listing, you're doing the outside space, it's going to be different. I have not looked real closely at, at the, what the, what photographers do. But I think basically they show you this bedroom is 10 by 10. This bedroom is 10 by 12. The master bedroom is 12 by 15. The outside. But they're just, they're measuring inside stuff. Yeah. And, and so that isn't being calculated into the square footage type part of it. Right. So, yeah. It's a good thing to compare what it was necessarily. Yeah. And I, I will tell you that you're supposed to have some way to base your information on. So sometimes, like, how do you measure a slab townhouse that's tw a twin home? Because you can't get down to one side. County records, 
are very are okay to, to use if you want to. You know, if you really don't feel like you can get a good measurement of a foundation, use the county records. But the county records are not always accurate. So that's why I measure everything and then I compare it to what the county has. Um, but there are some reasons or some circumstances where you'll use something. I figure a, count, a, a county official putting the measurements in there, appraiser, those are two people that I will go to court with and say, this is where I got my information for, from. I got it from the county or I got it from the previous appraisal and used it. Otherwise, I, won't, I don't use any, any other information. It has to be me gathered it. I gathered it. 